What should you do when you are depressed and feeling miserable? Good morning everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Henry Dunant was a wealthy 19th century Swiss banker when the Swiss government sent him to Paris to work on a business deal with Napoleon Bonaparte, the leader of the French Revolution. When he got to Paris, they told him that Napoleon was off fighting a war against the Austrians in Solferino, Italy. So Dunant got back into his carriage and set his horses galloping down to the battlefront. He got there just in time to hear the bugles blast and see the thundering charge of Napoleon's troops. Dunant had never before witnessed the ghastly carnage of war. He watched in horror as cannonballs tore through human flesh and acres of land became heaped with disfigured and dying men. Henry Dunant was so devastated that he remained at the front for weeks, helping doctors tend to the wounded in churches and nearby farmhouses. After his return to Switzerland, Dunant continued to be haunted by the images of war he had seen in Italy. He could not keep his mind on banking and became so distracted that he lost all his wealth. Even so, he had a sense that God was at work behind the scenes. Later, he wrote of this time in his life and said, I was aware of an intuition, vague and yet profound, that this was God's will. It seemed to me that I had something to accomplish, as a sacred duty and that it was destined to have fruits of infinite consequence for mankind. And that's exactly what happened. Out of his depression and failure, after following the wrong road to Italy, Henry Dunant founded the Red Cross, which has since saved millions and millions of lives and given relief to countless victims of war and disaster over the years. Later, Henry Dunant received the first Nobel Peace Prize for establishing this organization. We all know today's Gospel reading that appears in all the four Gospels. It is about the miracle of the five loaves and two fish feeding 5,000 men and also a great number of women and children. We also know the Lord's generosity that cannot be outdone as 12 wicker baskets of untouched food were left over after the feeding of the multitudes. We also see one of the beginnings and references to the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist with Jesus saying a prayer, breaking the bread, and distributing it through his disciples. Let us look today at other parts of the passage. Jesus had just heard of the tragic death of John the Baptist, his cousin, and thus he withdraws into a boat to a deserted place by himself. But the crowd pressed on him, and when he saw them, he was moved with pity, and he cured their sick. As evening approached, his disciples asked him to send the people away, for the people were hungry, and the disciples were also very tired and exhausted. There may have been times when we found ourselves in a similar situation as Jesus. The death of a loved one, the crumbling of a business, the loss of a job, the breakup of a marriage, and some other form of tragedy that has weighed us down into depression. Our response is to retreat, to withdraw from the world like the human Jesus, who may have worried at what will happen to him in the not-too-distant future. The dark clouds of failure and self-doubt may have creeped into us as we faced an uncertain future. Have we forgotten a God who is compassionate and caring, who is generous and willing even as the world has turned its back on us? Instead of feeling depressed and pitying ourselves, which will sink us deeper into a whirlpool of misery where escape may not anymore be possible, we say our prayer, break our chains of depression, and go out of our house and distribute kindness to the world. Many people have found therapy from their misery by helping others, especially those who are more helpless than them, the poor, the disabled, the elderly. As we come out of our shells and pour out our energies to help others in most dire need, we see the image of God filled with compassion for us to bring us healing and wholeness. As we disembark from our own lonely boat of depression to minister to the sick on the shore of the real, we find God's healing hand touching us as we touch others with our love. And then all the tiredness, fatigue, exhaustion that we may have felt in us starts to go away. And we, who have been sick, who now are healing the sick, through God's grace, are also healed. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, 
use my frail and weak self, a victim of countless battles, to minister to those who are wounded, so that I too may be healed in the process. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.